for me to start the recording. Oh, okay. I will. I'll turn it on earlier then. Hi, Patrick. Hi. Okay, I'll mute. Hey, you cool down? <laughs> Not really. Is that really? You about to pump a thousand plus up. I will apologize to you and Tom, okay? For chewing Tom's ass out last week in front of everybody. I didn't mean to really do that, Tom, but I had to make a point that basically people need to start really reading what is there. And you need to understand what you're reading. And to you, Bill, basically, I'm not... I'm not going to argue any more about going to the post office, okay? I don't want to hear anything more about it. Do you guys think that that's where it's at, uh, using registered mail and all the postal dead mail system? Use it. I don't care, okay? I'm to the point to where I am burned out on this whole damn process. I've tried to put all the documents up there to... Utilize, and I'm getting tired of trying to re-explain everything uh, when I tried to make them simple uh, to where you should be able to figure it out and fill in the blanks. Okay, we've done enough court cases. We've gone down this road. We know that we're the creditor. We know that we have a bankrupt, that they created a fictional bankrupt for their benefit, by making him a bankrupt, but he's also the bailee to us, that he became a U.S. bankrupt so that they could utilize him in their bankruptcy. They were the ones that are the benefit or the state of bankruptcy. They're using our fictional bailee bankrupt for their benefit. That's the only way they can access it. I've tried to explain to you people that you need to read the words. Look up these words. Just don't go by what I tell you in the process. This is not Patrick says everything and believe it is gospel. I'm not writing the damn Bible. Okay? (laughs) My stuff is not totally gospel. Okay, it does have mistakes in it. Okay, that's what this whole group was supposed to be, was a group effort out here. But when everybody relies upon one person to do all their dirty work for them, you burn out that one person, and then basically all of a sudden, the thing is left high and dry. Okay? Yeah, I understand. I'm going to be out of here very shortly, okay? You guys are going to be on your own. Is this recording, Tom? Yes, it's recording. Oh, okay. I didn't hear the lady. Okay. Go ahead, Bill, and fill in a little more about what a meat said. Huh? What's that? <laughs> What's about that? the documents, basically. More. A more. About the documents. What about the documents? Well, what about what you were saying about them? Okay, he did. Tom didn't have the recording on, so basically, uh, restate what you said there before, so that basically it's on the oh. tape, so that other people can oh. hear oh. this on the audio. Yeah, what I was saying. What I was saying. What I was saying is. Uh, Speak up a little. I said, 90% of what what has been done that, that uh, over the years, even though... Still like, can't hear them. Can you hear me? Now we can. Well, before, you used to be too can loud. You now, now you're too soft. Try it again, Bill. All right. Uh, what I said, maybe I need to put you on speaker. I didn't say, because 
All right, can you, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Much better. Uh, okay. What I said is 9% of what Amir has used has been through Patrick indirectly. <laughs> Okay, this was even before uh, um, Amir knew about he knew about Patrick, but he knew we were getting it. He has done some modifications on what Patrick has done, but 99.9% of everything that Patrick has done works. It works, but uh, it's just one, two little things that's been missing. But everything has been working. And and I know this for a fact. I'm not talking about what I, what somebody tells me. I'm going by what I've seen. So you know the thing of it is, it's, it's tried. Uh, I know it's difficult for people to try to deal with some of this stuff, but you know, take your time. You really have to go through it. Go through it with a fine tooth comb because it takes that. And you do, and you do have to put out your, uh, whether it be the Black Law Dictionary, whether it be Anderson's or stuff. You going, you going to have to read the stuff. You just can't just go. Even though Pat gives you the format, you have to really read and interpret and understand what you're dealing with. <clears throat> So that that's all I have to say in reference to that. The, the trouble I'm having is actually down in section three and paragraph five on on the uh, some of the items exactly what the state that I want done. Uh, the the overall document I think I understand pretty clearly. But, uh, for instance, uh, on, on the mortgage, I can give the mortgage number, but exactly how to state what I want done, what I want examined, that I'd like the property returned to me and the lien removed. Do I have to say that, or will that come out in the forensic audit? Well, you can put that all in there if you want to, okay? Okay. You don't have to leave this as... Page two, you can make page three. You can add more to it. That's I've already done that. That's the instructions, okay, that go along with that. Right, right. Yes, my my documents are, are different lengths than yours because of additional stuff that I put in there. So I don't and have a problem with You can have that addressed and sent to uh, the uh, sheriff, if need be, of the county. Or to the U.S. Marshals, whatever. And then also to, to have the forensic audit that performed by the Secret Service. Yes. Yeah, the task of the sheriff is just to simply go uh, take people off the land, right? He doesn't do any of the other work for us. He just takes the people off the land and maybe cleans out the records uh, in the court, in the local court. He can seize property, okay? Uh, right. What is an account? It's property. True. Now, are, are you suggesting, Patrick, that uh, that we don't use certified mail because that, that's what we came back to last week? You know, it's getting ready to well, do that. Well, the best thing to do is to walk this into the bankruptcy court if you can get there. Okay. You have the clerk of the court basically sign the items, and they will hand them back to you, and then tr you turn around and take them down to the sheriff or to the U.S. Marshal or to the Secret Service. Give them a copy of it. Get a receipt for them to process that. Okay. Okay. Give them both copies. Uh, get a receipt that you, with your you should take a fourth copy into the clerk of the court to where the clerk of the court will time stamp that in to the system. Now you have your receipt there from the clerk of the court that you delivered that. Yes, that's what I used to do with my bankruptcy case when I had a car. I don't have a car right now. Uh, though I did, I did mail by ordinary mail a lot of my filings to the bankruptcy court, and I had no problem with them. 
And then basically these writs, it says that they will uh, return them to you. Well, the bankruptcy clerk should be able to give them right over to the U.S. Marshals or to have them sent over to the Secret Service. They're all working together in bed with one another. So basically they ought to be able to hand it, hand it off to them. Right. They're all part of the same bankrupt corporation. Actually, I have a question. That's my way of thinking, but if they uh, turn around and send it back to you, then now you should have the courts, the clerk of the court's signature, and now you should be able to uh, have it directly sent to them. You could either, at that point in time, send it by registered mail or certified mail, however you want to get it there, okay? Yeah, I prefer I don't think like that registered mail is going to accomplish anything more than certified mail is out yeah. here in the process. Some people think that registered mail carries a lot of weight, but basically I have seen very little action really come from this postal dead mail system and see the registered mail and the certified mail are both trademarked by the postal system. Hmm. Okay, if you look at it, they have trademarks. Okay, they don't belong to the post office. They belong to the postal service. Okay, to the dead okay. mail system. Okay, so it's preferable to do it in person, which is what I'd rather do it and usually have done one I, I was able to before. I'll, I'll try to get to that. Okay. That's what you other people should be doing, too, okay? Think about what you need to do here. So when we list a court case uh, as one of the items, we should uh, uh, wrap into that what we want as a decision. Just or try and do the big stuff, Tom. Right. Okay. I was I was uh, I was thinking of a friend of mine who needs it, but yes, I'm 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 doing mine first before I do yes, that. Yes, he can take that in and do an individual item against a court case. Right. But basically, he uses uh, his case number as his certificate of live birth number as his bailment number. Yeah. Bankruptcy yeah. court bailment number, and that's what that court, that other court case should be being filed in to bankruptcy under. Ah, okay. Now, in my birth date, I want to get the basic documents in and then utilize what we have in the court cases. That other documents that I discover, like old loans and credit cards, I, I, I sub submit them later. When they come and talk to you, Tom, they will probably pick all that garbage up. Okay? Oh, great. Okay, great. Okay. And I yes. will then have contact with You're them. wanting completely out of the system, okay? Yes. yes. You're going to be pulling your main bailment off. When you pull that main bailment off, then basically all the other attachments have to go away too. Okay. And that's part of the forensic audit? Yes. That right. should be okay. all part of the forensic audit and by the seizure of the U.S. Marshals to go and pick up all of your bailments and all sub items out there. Okay. All rents that are due. And see, this is rent due. And this was by an uh, inurement action. I-N-U-R-E-M-E-N-T. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we were basically uh, in an inure to the United States Corporation quasi-corporation, bankrupt under this uh, contractress contract, quasi-contractress, okay? Because it's not a full-fledged contract. There's, it's never been written in writing. They did that for a purpose, to cover their butts. But all we have to do is come and put the reality behind it. Now they go away. They have to disappear. 
It's like you turn the light on, and basically the shadow disappears. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is Lawrence. Yeah. On the on the on the um, the registered mail that Bill was talking about, you you write in a sense that that registered receipt, the registered um, label is belong to the postal service. However, it has another document that you have to fill out before you um, do anything with it, and that's the thing that transfers to the post office. <coughs> what it does. What it does, you can check the equity from Bless you. Gosh. Whoever that is, please mute out. Uh, It's California. Okay, hold on a minute. He's muted. Go ahead, Lawrence. Yeah, once the citizens start using anything, most of the time we're going, when you use the post office, postal service, you have to use stamps you, in order for you to keep your, your private. You use stamps that you stick on your mail. They don't let them give you the cork that strip, strip. Once you do that, anything you use, well, it be a post office, postal service or not, it, if it comes private for you, and they can't do anything with you. Yeah. But that register is a very, very important part of whatever you, whatever document you send. When you send it registered, it carries a lot more authority than than, than just average mail. It, it, it renders completely private. They wow. can't. They, I want you to think about this, okay? Yeah. That registered mail label is how many digits? Um, I, I, I think no, it, no. It, it might be nine because it got letters to it, too. It's got nine digits, and basically it's a U.S., okay? So it's a U.S. bankrupt number. Yeah, it's a, they are utilizing that nine digit as another bondment number. Right. Against you, against your assets. Mhm. Okay, so they're putting a, another uh lien in the process against your assets by way of the postal system. But if you look at the document that you have to fill out with, that belongs to the post office. They cannot do anything with it. That's where you yeah, register it. Yeah, but if you just put regular stamps on the envelope and had it sent, okay, the mail must go through. The post office has to deliver that mail. Right. All you're That's... wanting is a receipt from right. that, okay? Right. And that's basically you can get the same thing, confirmation of delivery, with a green card. Well, that ain't all you're going to get with a register. Yeah, but you need to either use a registered or you need to use certified. I'm just saying that basically I don't see uh, the monetary advantage, but I see a disadvantage to using mm-hmm. registered mail because now the postal system is coming in and putting a nine digit QCIP number. Against your account, another mark of the beast number, nine digits, where the cert- cer- certificate of life or the uh, certified mail number is not. How many digits is it? Uh, Twenty. From my 20. understanding, from my understanding, the certified mail number is the public number. But no, it isn't, okay? The public number is basically the registered mail number. That is the debt money money system. Nine digits. It's not in the private. 
the private would be the certified mail number. Well, that, because I can tell you they can't perfect. they can't use that as a uh, bonding item. I, I can tell you this. Let me say this. This, this just a funny example. When I established my estate, and when I sent it to uh, Washington to be registered, to uh, be um, recorded, I used a registered number for the recording. And when I did that, when I did that, everything that I dealt with with that particular document backed up from me. But when yeah, they did it, they put money into the system. It put money into the system under a bailment claim. Okay. Yep. But but why would I have any type of authority with it if it did? I mean, they would be because controlled. you are the bailor. Okay. Okay. But see, all we need to do is get this stuff into the bankruptcy court to where we're the bailor there already, okay, and claim our stuff away from them. And if we come in in the private, and that would be using the certified mail number, okay, so that we're not putting another uh, debt monetary system into the system. Okay. Then uh, we should get uh, what we need out of the bankruptcy court. See, we don't want to use, and that's why they regulate those damn uh, registered mail labels. What color are they? Red. Red. Debt. What color is the certified mail label? Green. Green. Living. You want a green passport. You want a green identification card. You want to be placed on the green sheet. You want green status. Look it up in Oxford Dictionary what green means. Okay? Right. Right. You're supposed to be in the green. The Irish knew this. At least some of the older ones did. Wearing the green. Okay? Uh We want to wear the green. Because green, and see, Abraham Lincoln even knew this. He was putting greenbacks into circulation. Greenbacks were backed by real substance. Asset value either by uh, of something of real value, where everything else is backed by debt. Right. And the bail system, hell system out here, of bailment is all debt money system, uh-huh. backed by nothing. So that's right. It's not backed by anything. Right. Yeah, it's all backed by... Yeah, red. Except except for you or me. Yeah, and see, we want to, so, yeah, just looking at the colors, okay? What color did all the prisoners over in Germany, they weren't all Jews, so I'm not going to say all the Jewish uh, people who went in the concentration camps. There was a lot of Christians and uh, Polacks and everything else, Lutherans and whatever, that went in there too. But they were marked as debtors, and they had a yellow star. That's that what meant I mean? That they were a debtor. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. They didn't have a green star. If they would have had a green star, they would have been a creditor. In other words, you're saying that was a debtor's prison. Yes, that's what hell is all about. It's about debt. Look up the word in Valentine's Dictionary about hell. Mm -hmm. It was a place under the Chancery Court to where the people were incarcerated because of debt. Mm -hmm. 
What do you think all of these jails are? When you go to jail, you're going to hell. Because they're taking you in on a debt charge. Yeah, you're right. And see, you just didn't know how to set the debt charge off against this bankruptcy bailment case number that we had all along. Yeah, sometimes things are right in front of our eyes and we don't see what's all right there. That red and green, unless you're colorblind, is pretty obvious. Moses crossed the Red Sea. Okay? That was the red line of debt. They were no longer debtors when they crossed that sea. They were now all creditors. Or they were wearing the green. A lot of people say in the blue. Okay? Well, you might say in the blue-green. Yeah, it's a lot going on, I can tell you that. But it, I mean, it, these don't have to be all that perfect. You have that bankruptcy bailment number with your certificate of live birth. Just tell them what you want. I want to pick up my bail. Bailment. That was initially deposited with this bankruptcy court right. and all attachments. Now release it, clerk of the court, and you better find out where it's at because basically it was signed over to you. Mm. Okay? Yep. That's all we need, really could have needed to be had done, but basically since it's spread all over, we might as well send the U.S. Marshals out to go and pick it up. Right, but this puts the, the heat on the clerk. Yeah. That's because he has that responsibility. So he's he's the one who should want to pour into the as much as we do. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens tomorrow, okay? Okay. When they get my package... Uh, in there, and basically I'll be on the phone to them and say, okay, what's the status? Hmm. Of the updated files that I sent to you. I want my bailment, and I want it now. (laughs) You've got three days to get it to me. And that's a good idea for all of us to, once we send it in, to keep in contact with them. Yeah, you either send it in or you walk it in, okay? Mm. And if you walk it in, basically say, I'm here to pick up my bailment that was deposited into the bankruptcy court Mm. system. (coughs) Here's my bailment account number, case number, whatever. And yes, clerks of the court can be arrested also. Hmm. Nobody is above the law. Hello, Patrick. This is Kevin. How are you doing? Okay. Hey, when you say pick up your bailment, are you talking about your uh, your birth certificate number? Well, I'm talking about all the inherent assets that basically were attached to that birth certificate and all accruals that have been filed against that. Okay. See, that was your initial bailment. All of these 
certificates of live birth were recorded through the clerk of the court system in this country. Okay? Now, even the county clerks of the court work for the main clerk of the court, the main bankruptcy clerk of the court of the United States Corporation. They're all tied in. That's why they were our documents were sent out to D.C. and then processed through. But the number is basically it was filed under the bankruptcy court. The registration number is filed under your uh, birthing district, federal district, bankruptcy court. Hmm. So it's a federal uh, district bankruptcy uh, bailment. And then it's being able to utilize in that district by the state that that district is in and then also by uh, the United States Corporation. And then you got a transmitting utility number, which was your Social Security number. Hmm. Yeah, and then basically you had another place on the back of the Social Security card to where they moved the assets over into the DTC to be held as additional bailment for all the other corporations that are out here. Hmm. Like the Department of Defense for people that had a military DD-214. Now, the Church of Rome came in, and basically they were able to utilize uh, the initial bailment account by way of the uh, bankruptcy court system because they were a diocese within that uh, district. Okay? And they put a claim against that as they were a foreign creditor to the bankrupt United States. Mm. Dating all the way back to the Civil War days because they were funding both sides of the war along with the banks, the Rothschild bankers out of England. Crazy. It's all about money and debt money. Yep. And see, that's what we were told a long time ago was not to use this debt money system all throughout the Bible. They would get into debt and then they had to get out of it. But it's all fictional. We don't owe the bankers anything. The bankers never loaned us anything to begin with. It was all just paper. It was total fraud to try and get us into a debt. And half of them never paid their initial filing fees to begin with. Like the ones for the Federal Reserve Bank. Not all those filing fees ever got paid. These bankers don't risk one iota of their own money in any of this. They're not that stupid. But they will take everything they can from you. 
<laughs> you know. You just have to turn the light on and make the shadows, this shadow debt, disappear. Hmm. One thing that Bill did find out, if you guys have any problem in uh, utilizing uh, the Adobe, uh, when you pull up some of these uh, PDFs, Make sure you have the latest update of the Adobe Reader for your system. <laughs> okay. What, what's it doing? I do have the latest update, but I actually use PDF Lite because. Well, it seems- basically, I'm talking about anybody that has a problem right. that basically comes across garbled. And then they think that it's the file that's on the system. It's not the file that's on the system. It's their reader needs to be updated. That's what it was. Okay. Yes. Somebody in a car? Oh, that's a Bill's line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's from the yeah. Patrick? Yes. Um, I know I asked Norge about this, and, and she kind of set me straight, but I pulled off my site um, in New York about the U.S. Marshals um, having their own specific forms about um, um, serving a summons and their instructions, and they're they're very specific. Um, and they also charge eight dollars a summons. Do, um, do I use them, or do I use my own forms and tell them to take the money out of my bailment? You use the clerk of the court, and basically, I've got a statement on there. The rule of law is he who benefits from an item is the one that has to pay, and that being the case. The only true beneficiaries were the United States and the state of Iowa, in my case, the true bankrupts, quasi bailors, and the Federal Reserve Monetary User Processor. Therefore, all United States court fees and other United States service and charges are prepaid from the true bankrupts usage of our bailments. Okay. Throw that at the clerk of the court. I got it on the form. Okay. <laughs> wow. Now, let the clerk of the court chew on that one for a little bit. Because <laughs> they can be pretty belligerent. Yeah. I mean, basically, hey, we want a filing fee. No, this case is already filed, and it's not a court case, so there is no court charges. Okay? This is a bailment charge. Okay, you're to set this off against the bailment. You come in under a, uh, I thought I posted that up there uh, before uh, on one of the documents, a substantial adverse claim. Mm -hmm. Okay, and when you read what that says about a substantial adverse claim, that means that the bankruptcy has no jurisdiction over it. Mm-hmm. Substantial adverse claim, a claim which is real and actual. See, it's not a phony claim. It's not a fictional claim. It's real. We're coming in as the real creditor, as distinguished from one which is merely colorable. And see, that's what, in a lot of cases, we've been still coming in in the colorable side of the situation. But it, at the very end, it says, claim sufficient to deprive court of bankruptcy 
of constructive possession of property. That means they basically have no lawful claim to have us do anything. We gave our stuff to them, basically there to be holding it, and they've been benefiting from it the whole damn time because they're a bankrupt. And just, Tom, what are you trying to do? Rip me off for more uh, damn money? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Then I'll take you to court. Patrick, I have a question. Yeah. Um, yeah, so go by, ahead. Do, by doing these documents, um, it doesn't matter what condition you're in or status or whatever it is, by doing these documents, you're basically releasing all the bondages. It will be collapsing them all. Collapsing, okay? yeah, that's what I meant, yeah. Yeah, you're so collapsing it doesn't matter. all of those. Uh-huh. And see, you're not the debtor. You're a fictional person. You're a United States or state of uh, bankrupt person. And mm-hmm. he's your bailee, okay? So you're going to execute him. You're terminating him. Now, when you terminate him, then all bailments that are, have been attached to him have to come back to the true bailor. That means all of these quasi bailors, the United States and the corporate, the corporate quasi bailors, the United States and the state of, they have to make their payments. Now we have just collapsed their debt that they owe back to us. We're bringing down the national debt because 90% of the national debt is really owed to the people of this country. We bailed out the country, okay? Right, right. Especially Wall Street. And it's about time they started paying us back for doing our obligation to them, which was only supposed to be for 21 years. And they so almost you, rent due. Big time. Big time. So what do you what do you um um I know this is a dumb question, but what do you think you know when you turn the lights on and and all the cockroaches runs away, what do you think they're gonna do when they start seeing this stuff coming in? Like I know it's a dumb question. But do you think they'll like um try something to um of what, course, come out and shoot you? Come out and shoot you? <laughs> I don't know. What? You're afraid of dying? You're going to die sooner or later. Okay? Well, just the physical You've got body. the knowledge. you got the knowledge now. Hopefully, the mm-hmm. next lifetime you come back, you'll uh, bring the knowledge to the forefront. You won't get into this scenario to begin with. Well, I'm hoping I don't have to leave this lifetime to do that. Well, basically, at the rate this thing is going, I'm just about ready to say, hey, Get me the hell out of here. Hmm. I mean, when your family and everything else is at odds against you, and that's, like I said all along, that in a lot of cases is your worst enemies out here. Your family, your family, everything that you've been associated with thinking that that's where the truth was, only to find out it's not. So I have a quick question. Good afternoon. Should I file, or should I start this in my birth state, even though that's not where I currently reside? No, you go into the bankruptcy court that you're in for the last 160 days or 180 days. Okay. That bankruptcy court number basically is filed uh, into the national bankruptcy court system, and basically that local bankruptcy court, that local district that you're in right now, will be able to pull that up because that number is tracked in the national bankruptcy bailment uh, database. Okay, yeah, California is one of the worst places to be for this. Huh? Huh? So California is one of the worst places to be for this. 
Why? They don't like to cooperate. Wait, who are you cooperating with? No, they don't like to cooperate with us. How I'm do you know? Them. You haven't done things right, so why should they cooperate with somebody that's not doing something right? You have a point. Okay. Okay. See, we think we know everything, and then we blame the wrong person. The person that needs to be blamed is us. We weren't doing the things right. Yeah, who's ever asking the question has the speakers on in the background and is starting to call some echoes. Yeah, see, that's the problem with this whole country is we tend to want to blame everything on everybody else. Well, Amen. really, we are the biggest culprits out here. Yep. We go in the courts and we do all the presumptions. They're not doing the presumptions. We're doing the presumptions. We're presuming that they're presuming. <laughs> now, that's a presumption right there. So we're making the wrong presumptions. Okay, I said what I said from anecdotal evidence, and obviously the people who have tried have uh, not done things in a proper manner. I'm very new to this, so um, I'm really just trying to listen and learn at this point, but obviously I did have a question, so. Yeah, and basically all we need to do is we need to know that this is the bailment. And see, the clerks of the courts are the ones that handle the bailment. Not the judges. We were, I've been to every court out there, and basically every court says we don't have the jurisdiction to handle this. That's right, because it was over with the clerk of the court. The judges don't have it. The jurisdiction is with the clerk of the court. Okay, and those so let me another, work for us. Let me ask another dumb question then. No, there's it's so much a dumb stuff. question. Okay. There's so much stuff. Yeah. Questions that piss me off, but there's no dumb questions. <laughs> okay. Just dumb people. There's so much stuff, even in the We the People um, Yahoo groups, stuff to read, stuff to note, fill out. What's the best place to start? Because stuff comes through every day. Uh, you cut out there. I... Okay, things come through the Yahoo group every day, and there's tons uh, of files of documents and everything. Where exactly should I start as the best place to get this moving? I'm about ready to file for my nine eight number um, and all that kind of stuff. I'm, you know, I'm just a little confused. Well, you need to call up about the ninety eight number, but uh, okay. Uh, Go in and ask the group site there. Uh, there are several people that can help you get that 98 number on the group site, okay? Okay. Okay. Now, uh, Tom, I think, has posted all the new documents into a folder that starts off with 101 in it. Right. Okay. okay. And then, on the group and, site. Is that correct, Tom? Yeah. 101, the National Court Equity Court. Oh, equity Court. And uh, when you go to the file section, that uh, file's on top because the 101 is the first alphabetically. So go go into that folder and get all the documents there. And uh, ask what questions you have on, on the Yahoo group. I'm sorry, what was the last part you said? Ask, ask your question, any questions you may have during the week on the Yahoo group. Okay, ask my question on the Yahoo one of the quick yeah, questions. Post it onto the group site there. Right. Okay. Can you file? Can you do the nine eight number online, or do you have to call? You have to call. Okay. You have to, we were calling, and basically we should still be able to get it by calling in. Because see, getting that ninety eight number, you're not doing, and that's what the the SS four says that basically do not use the form. Okay. Okay. 
And uh, you have to explain to them that you're outside of the federal bailment zone. Okay? Okay. That would be what I would say to them, that you're outside of that bailment zone. You're in the private. And see, that's what the federal, uh, your mailbox and everything is a postal mailbox. So that is property of the federal zone, federal bailment zone. Okay. That's that's partly why we never got too much out of a damn uh, postmaster general either. Okay, so I don't need an address in another country? No, you don't need an address. You've got a foreign address right here in this country. You're foreign to the federal bailment. Okay. 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 Or they're foreign to us. Really, they're foreign to us. We're here on the land. Yeah, Patrick, I heard that some of these agents are so smart or stupid that they don't realize that. So that's why most people use a foreign address so they don't get, like, these dumbass agents. Well, you asked how some of the people on the site got it, and basically they'll try and give you a little few tidbits on when you talk to these people, okay? It's good to team up with someone uh, to get um, calling for each other that I know of. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, the person who's has, asking the questions, uh, read the welcome email that came out today. Print it out, save it. In there, it tells you about the Skype group where we're in chat all through the week, too. Uh, we, we tend to ask our more private questions there. Uh, but you, you should also ask questions on, on the Yahoo group through email. Uh, to, to read the welcome letter. It, it will tell you the procedure for getting on that Skype group. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. Okay. Now, I'm going to mute you out because you have a lot of background noise when you speak. So when you want to come back in, do star six. Uh, Hello, Patrick. How are you doing? Okay. I have one question. You mentioned the one-on-one equity uh, documents in that file. Is that the file new that has to be going to the bankruptcy court within your jurisdiction? Yes. Okay. Basically, they're they're a template. Okay. Right. Uh, there should be, uh, and utilize them as such, and basically uh, file them in. Uh, do a cover letter to uh, right. the clerk of the court, and basically uh, to that local bankruptcy clerk of the court, and then saying basically if they can't handle it then they are to forward this to uh, the Federal uh, Bankruptcy Court in Washington, D.C. at 333 Constitution Avenue. Constitution Avenue, yeah. Yeah, and you can look up the Federal Bankruptcy Court in D.C. and get their full address and their fax number or phone number and everything else. And uh, you'll also, uh, I think, have the same person still in there, uh, at least last we knew, uh, the clerk of the court was uh, last name Caesar. Yeah, I believe the same one. They still there. Uh, uh, so, in other words, what what would be your case number for when you make this? Uh, your case uh, in, number is basically your certificate of live birth registration number. That's not. Oh. Yeah, you that is give, a give, give, bankruptcy give what, bailment number. Give Caesar what Caesar wants, right? Huh? It's Caesar what Caesar wants. That's a great last name. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that would be that. Uh, okay. The yeah, registration the number. The court clerk's name is Caesar. Okay. The registry number. Okay. All right. But, yeah, the registration number is really uh, the bankruptcy bailment number that we gave okay. over to uh the bailment that we handed over to the United States and the state of Iowa 
uh, quasi bankrupt corporations. You can actually write a bond. By way of our created, okay, United States and state of your birth, all, your name in all capital letters as your Bailey. So you had to right. hand your bailment over to a Bailey first. Bail. Huh? Your bailment. Yeah. Over to uh, the, your Bailey. Okay. And then your Bailey is now a citizen of this corporation. Okay. The United States and the state of bankrupts. Okay, so now everybody's a bankrupt over there on that side of the aisle. Hmm. And they turn around and come in him. as the master over the sub-bankrupt. So they became the quasi-failer to utilize the funds. Okay. Hmm. Bill Smith, I had to mute you because you had a lot of talking in the background. Come in with star six whenever you want to say something. Okay, Patrick. Now I understand. Thank you. Okay. I'll get those out as soon as possible. Okay. Anybody else have any questions there? And see, when we come out of this, we can no longer use the debt monetary system. That means you don't use any dead mail or dead money uh, monetary systems. So we were using uh, lawful money? We will basically get co- lawful conversion of our assets by way of the Philadelphia uh, Federal Reserve Bank, which is basically attached to the Treasury Department, which will be holding our real assets. But we will get a full conversion value of that. For a dollar value, we will get the full conversion value instead of getting 10% value. Hmm. So you'll be utilized there with a debit card or with, 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 a, with different forms in regards, in regards to now any type of... you a debit card that basically can still be utilized out in the, the banking world here. Right. And you will be getting Federal Reserve dollars, but you may get like 10 Federal Reserve dollars for each dollar value of asset that you uh, get converted. Right. And every, their conversion would be all the bailments that you've sent in for release. Yeah. And basically you, you'll get those in gold back bearer bonds. And then basically at that point in time, you would uh, turn around and place them on deposit in the Treasury Department. Or you can go off on your own, wherever you want to go. Okay. But stay the hell away from all banks. Hmm. Okay. So we're, like, so we're likely to be seeing uh, our uh, our assets in the form of gold-backed bearer bonds. Yes, but you did you okay. hear the rest of it. Okay? Stay away you from turn banks. around yeah. and you put it back on deposit with the Treasury Department. Okay. Under your 98 be... series number. Okay. As and a foreign I... grantor trust. Okay. Now that is in the private. Now the to... bankruptcy courts and everything else can't touch that 98 series account. Okay. Because it's foreign to them. They have no jurisdiction over that. So you deposited back in your three eight your three eight number, the the uh, gold bonds. You deposited them you, back into your three eight series. You base you deposit it into the Treasury Department, which is the lawful uh, department of 
the United States of America. Okay. Treasury, okay? It's not the Department of the Treasury. It's the Treasury Department. Okay. Okay? And this is exempt from the bankruptcy Department of the Treasury. See, the Department of the Treasury is the Treasury uh, for the bankrupt. All capital, United States, quasi-corporation. Sometimes you have to write this stuff down and find out who the players are. So I know it's a little confusing out here in trying to place all the players because they have mimicked a lot of the players. Hmm. So it's a good uh, good idea to have a treasury direct account, but then I need number. Or is this where you will get is? something? Don't worry about that until you get out of a system. Until you get your bailment, okay? Yeah, you get your bailment, really and then basically you'll have a place to. Uh, they will either give you a number at that point in time, or basically, uh, if you already have one, you just say, uh, "Put it under this account number." Exactly. Okay. Okay. How are you doing, Patrick? Okay. Okay, this this Marvell, uh, Libra Max. Uh A lot of things he was saying, you, you're absolutely right, especially about the United States of America's treasury. They have hundreds and trillions of full faith and credit for all of us. And basically, they've been waiting on us. Just like you said, they've been waiting on us to quit dealing with this debt instrument because we are the problem, you know. And then, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of folks out there doing these uh, promissory notes and stuff like that. Okay, it, that can work because even in their own records, they state that anyone that signs an instrument. The last one that signed it is the one that backs it. So I mean, they got a they got a lot of words in that stuff. And if you're just looking at it, it seems like it's a trick. But if you read it like two or three times and do exactly what it says, it's not a trick at all. You know, because yeah, I, I mean, I, I haven't really looked at your 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 new stuff today. You know, but I'm gonna look at it later on. But you know, I've been reading a, a lot of things you have, and at first it was confusing. Now it's not. You know, and like you said, look the words up. I looked them up, and I went, "Wow." So, but you're right. They are waiting on us to come in through the back door, and yes, we do have to stay in private. And for right now. You have to hand them that stuff over, and once you do, don't you people please don't do not use that social security number because that means you're an agent for them. Yeah, and a lot of things they did. Even Patrick told you the the driver's license registration, the state ID. When you sign that stuff, you wind up being an employee for these people. That's why he won't listen to you. Because you keep signing it and because you think you actually need a job. Now, here's one thing I'm going to put out there. Uh, once we receive what is due to you, you can go out there and make, and, and make the companies of uh, free energy, clean food, clean air. If you want your own peace officers not police officers, peace officers, you can hire them yourself. You know, I'm not saying be a bully toward the government or all the rest of that because if you read up on government, they actually are doing their job. <laughs> People don't even get it, but they are doing their jobs. You know, they, they're their gatekeepers. 
And a lot of them is they sneaky. And they do hire people and that they will not tell them the full extent of their jobs. And that's all I want to say, Patrick. Yeah, that's true. Uh, is that uh, they don't give full disclosure. They only give enough information to those people because, see, if those employees knew what was going on, they would be quitting also, okay? But there are people out there that basically uh, will uh, not want to come out of the type system, okay? So basically at that point in time, you can hire them for double the amount that they're getting paid right now and basically have them working for you. You can hire them away from the system, and you pay them in lawful currency, okay, or your currency to where it's not, it won't be recorded. And you can pull them out of the system and pull them under your protection under uh, a different system in the private, your private enterprise system. You make them a private enterprise employee. Yep. Keep the liars with the liars and keep the truth sayers with the truth sayers. Cause yeah. Public, is, public means lie. Private is truth because a lot of people don't even know this. Pub, private is the one that actually funds every activity for, I mean, private is the one that actually funds um, uh, currency to the public. Yeah. So people don't know that. And I'm like, wait a minute. You know, well, which part did you want to be in? You know, you want to keep listening to these guys that tells you lie and stress you out every day of your life and tell you what you should do. Or do you want to become the man or the woman and live in private and and handle handle your own communities, your own affairs, because we're responsible for that. But people, we let these, I call them zombies, we let them take over our information and tell us what's right. Name one lawyer, one judge that actually told you the truth. So you ain't going to find them. So that means you have to look for it. And once you look for it, and, and Patrick gave everybody a lot of material, once you read this stuff, that's something that no one can ever take from you. And all you have to do is take a stand. Believe in yourself and take a stand. So that, that's it. I'm going to sign out. I mean, not sign out. Okay. But, but, yeah, uh, like I said, uh, you can set up a private enterprise, your private uh, uh, trust, okay? Basically, I wouldn't go with uh, trust, really your private enterprise or private uh, uh, whatever, okay? But then if you want to have employees and you pay them justly, okay, and you try and bring them out of the system, okay? Some people won't want to come out of the system, but basically you can give them uh, the understandings and then they can... Uh, some people just like to work, okay? But they like to be told what to do. But you can basically give them their uh, access to their funds, okay? So that they can protect it, and if basically they can pass it on to their uh, offspring, okay? But get it out of the debt money system. Get it out of hell. Out of bail. Okay. So, uh, and as far as, uh, like, uh, a couple people were talking about uh, these frivolous filings. Okay. In a lot of cases, you turn around and you say, basically... Uh, you have a st- substantial claim, and uh, basically your frivolous filing is a fraud. Uh, please take me to court. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, basically, give me the court. Basically, I want to get into that court because basically then I'm going to turn around and I'm going to unload on them. And basically, the clerk of the court, basically, is going to, that thing is going to be shut down so fast, just like what happened out there in North Carolina. When a couple came in there under tax evasion or whatever, they were taken in there, but they put a stop to the damn court and basically handed a document to the judge, and basically they ended up coming out of the system, from what we understand. The U.S. Marshals came and visited them and picked up all their documents. They signed them over. And if they were signing them over, they had to be coming out of the system because they were picking up their bailments. And all the rents that are due, and see, they owe us rent on all these assets that they've been utilizing under these uh, insurance bondage items. Okay, any more questions? I guess not. I have one. Not okay. a question. Am I free to talk? Go ahead. Okay. I'm, I want to double check a note I made here. I want to make sure I wrote it down the right way. On the um, copies that we take or send into the court, one of the two extra copies, one is for the marshals and one is for Secret Service, correct? No. No. Okay, my note is wrong. No. Thank you. You write two writs out, okay? Mm-hmm. One is being addressed to the U.S. Marshals. Okay. One is being addressed to the Secret Service. Okay. Now, you make three copies of that writ after you get done. You yep. staple two of those copies together, the instruction and the writ, the cover page of the writ, how many are pages of the instructions you have, you staple mm-hmm. that together. Right. Now you should have th- the the precept, okay, the right. cover page of the writ separate, and then uh, the instruction page is separate, okay? That's the originals. Then you mm-hmm. have two pack or two others that you've stapled together as copies. Right. Now you hand, you paper clip that all together as one writ package. Maybe. Okay. Then you make another one up for the Secret Service, another writ package the same way for the Secret Service. Okay. My and then you put a cover part. letter in there that addresses these two items. And if you've done your private court case, okay, to mm-hmm. where you rule and you give your judgment to as the bailer standing over your bailee, so it's a private court bailment case, okay, that's your case, right. and then you can attach a copy of that, say, here, this comes from my judgment, but it's going against your bankruptcy court case bailment court case number. It's really not a court case number. It's just a bailment case number. See, they don't have court case in front of that case number. Right. They just have case number. Mm-hmm. And see, mm-hmm. we, by presumption, presumed that it was a court case. Mm-hmm. It never was a court case number. It was a bailment case number. Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. We have done a lot of the wrong presumptions yeah. out here. Actually, on these case numbers, too, it, it became confusing for me, too, because of all our private one that we did first off, and then we used that to put in with the others. 
Yes, but see, we do away with that private, our private court case number. That's right. not what goes in there. That's just a bailment case number. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. It doesn't say anything about a court case number. It says bailment case number. But we were, I was trying to put a court case number in there. Mm. Right. Well, it does get confusing. That's why I had to ask that. When I looked at that, I thought, mm, something here, not right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So now you're unconfused, right? Oh, don't bet on it. Okay. So, <clears throat> so let me... Let me ahead, let me clarify. You mean I'm not going to I'm not supposed to go out to Vegas and throw a thousand dollars down on that you're unconfused? <laughs> <laughs> At ten to one so, odds, oh shit. <laughs> She's less less confused now. Okay, so we don't put the number two down. We just use case you number put number one. Okay, the number one is for. The adverse claim. Okay, and and, and then you're we the use... one that you're the one that is the adversary in this process. Okay. So you assign the adverse claim number against your bailment, which is the certificate of live birth. Which the case number is the certificate of live birth, and then your adverse claim number is number one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you've never done an adverse claim against your bailment yet, have you? No. Okay, then it's got to be number one. Okay. Now, slap yourself aside the head and straighten your brain out a little. <laughs> you need to rattle those marbles up there every once in a while. Oh, I think it's cement. <laughs> Okay, thank you. But thank you. Uh, just think about stuff being in the red and being in the green. Okay. And we use blue green instead of just blue. So we're in the blue green. Blue green. Like water. <laughs> we're part Irish. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, yeah, I am. <laughs> I think most of us are. Me too. Okay, any other questions? Oh, gosh. Come on, people. Ask some questions. <laughs> Ask this man some questions. I think the more you talk about it, the clearer it gets. I had you pulling your hair out, didn't I? <laughs> well, you're not the only one. Oh, well, this has really cleared it up for me. Hey, Patrick. Yeah. Do you, do you do you, would you happen to have a copy of your precipice in front of you, Sandy? Not right in front of me right now, but I'll okay. That's all right. post one of them up there on the site to Tom tomorrow morning so that he can, uh, I'll have Tom post it uh, up there. Okay. But the precipice that I'm going to send to him is going to be... Uh, a recipe for a restitution, writ of restitution. That's right. But you can modify it to uh, uh, change it around for a recipe for the writ of uh, execution. Mm-hmm. I thought I already had one up there. Yeah, there is one in that sheriff's document. Uh, sort of a... Uh, Many template there to go to the sheriff. Yes. Right. You use the word reentry, Pat. Yeah. Yes. You know, I, I'm I'm reading the definition at Anderson's. It's perfect. Yeah. 
Reentry for conditions broken. That's the one you want to really look at. And then see, we have, as we were the grantor, and we're also the bailor, because we granted our bailment over to them. So we're the bailor, and the bailor can always pick up the bailment off the shelf at any point in time. Yeah, number two of this, it says, on the subject of entry by a grantor for breach of conditions by the grantee, see grant two. Right. So basically we'll have the U.S. Marshals go and arrest our uh, bailey, okay, which is the, their corporate bankrupt, and basically what are we going to have done to him? Yeah, He's going to be executed, yeah. terminated. Yeah. It's is he, he's a quasi Bailey, right? No, I mean, the United Bailey. States Corporation and the state of they're the quasi Baylors. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, and then basically the Federal Reserve became a Bailey yeah. along with the DTC was a. Bailey to uh, the United States uh, quasi Baylor. Right. Okay. And that was the and, MO for them to want to do that was to masquerade or be quasi because they're concealing and de- and denying. Deceiving, right, because then they conceiving. were getting the benefits. Yeah. Okay, but they were trying to claim that it was the Baylor Bay who was receiving the benefits. Well, no, it's the quasi-Baylor who is receiving the benefits, not the true Baylor, us. Mm-hmm. We don't owe any taxes. This hasn't that- been a benefit for our behalf whatsoever. So that's the fiction Baylor. The fictional Baylor, the quasi Baylor, the United States All Capital Corporation, which is a quasi corporation also, because they're not the constitutional corporation. Okay? You, they you know they are a for profit corporation, and the constitutional corporation was created just as a governmental corporation that is a non-profit governmental corporation. I, I, I'm I, confused because I don't know. I can't figure out who, whom, because they're all fictional and they're corporation, but the, uh, they're hiding. You can't People figure out who. You can't figure out what. Who, who gets um, screwed? Huh? I can't figure out who would get the rap. Like, uh, it's not a person. It's not an individual, a live man or woman. It's a corporation. So it's fake. Yes, but they have officers. They have employees in this corporation. Agents, right? Yes. And basically they're all working for that quasi-corporation, which was a fraudulent corporation to begin with, but it still has employees. Okay, read read the definitions in the dictionaries about quasi-corporations, about quasi. Quasi, okay. Okay? Okay. That might bring a little more clarification to the understanding in the process, but you just need to know that you are the true bailor and that your fictional person was your true Bailey, okay, and then basically he became an employee to this quasi-bankrupt created 1871 creation United States quasi-corporation. 
you know, the one we're doing pigness to. Yeah, and basically it was under an inurement. Inurement, yeah, that was the word. Yeah, I wrote that down. And see, basically, I know that that word was used back in the 30s by Roosevelt. Oh, I think he called it endurment. And what they did, they basically placed us in an endurement situation. And they are basically the endurement trustee. Because these are inurement bailments. But it's the inurement bailment was handed over to our fictional person, so now he is our uh Bay Bailey, so now when the Bailey dies, all the assets have to go back to the bailor or the initial grantor. It's a simple uh, mathematics equation here. Everything reverts back to the source. Sorry, I'm not an Einstein. Is in your mind I N instead of E N? E N. I N U R E. Yeah. M E N T. U R E. I N U R E. Yeah, and I don't know how I came across that word. I just happened to be going through there and basically I said, Hey, this looks like an interesting word and basically I said, Oh, it is very interesting. Yeah, I've never used that word before. I've heard it, but I've never used it. Yeah. See, the Bible is a book of banking laws. But to understand the Bible, you have to understand the words. So you have to deduct the understanding of the words by going to, and then you have to use more than one dictionary, and the basic dictionary ends in A-R-O-Y. That's where the truth is going to be, but you have to not trust just one dictionary. You have to go and look at several dictionaries so that you can get the corresponding uh, understanding of the words. Like in a lot of cases, they don't have too much on green. But they do have this one item down there about green uh, something uh, ruling or something down there under green and valentines. Well, when you read what it says, it says basically uh, this is to forbid peddlers and other people from coming into this zone. Okay, when you operate in a green, that prevents the debtor or the devil and all of his cohorts with the debt money system from coming in against you. You now have your silver bullets. As what Abraham Lincoln used in the movie, uh, Lincoln Vampire Killer. about all the debt money that was being floated around out there. Yeah, it's going to be our ruin. Yeah. I'm at the in year if you want me to read it. No, you don't need to read it. Everybody else they can all read it, yeah. It's interesting. It'll the be in the document that I'll post tomorrow. 
it's interesting that the verb in your has uh, quite a different meaning than inurement. Yeah, inurement is usage. You, you well, in your in, yeah, usage is the primary meaning, but only in your mind has the additional meaning of benefit. Yes, but it's a benefit for the one who has received the in your. Right. Yeah, it's a passage okay. of title. So basically, who received the in your bailment? Your fictional person that they created as a bankrupt employee for the bankrupt corporation. Now the bankrupt corporation received the benefit of having that inurement. Hmm. Yeah, and if you fail to claim it, then you waive it. But it can't be waived because yeah. basically it's your fictional person and you can't destroy him until you pull the bailments away from him. Right. They ain't going to allow you to destroy him. Right. His bags are his his pockets are full. Yeah, you have to do it the right way, and that is to pull the bailments off the table, and then they have to arrest him because now he's a vagabond, he's penniless, and basically he's no good to them any longer. So now they have to execute him, get rid of him. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. You let them do the dirty work. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so he no longer becomes a benefit to them. Basically, he's just a he's just a dead piece of writing on the wall because he has no money. He has no bailment to protect him any longer. Just like you go to jail and you go down to the. Uh, bailer's office and gets a bail and you get out of jail okay now what happens when that uh, guy pulls the bailman away you get arrested mm-hmm. simple yeah when the clerk of the court notifies the sheriff hey the bailman's gone go get the guy That's why they have the delete button. Yeah. So do you think these county, well, these county sheriffs have to do it because, like, the only one that is represented by the people, he's the only office that's supposed to be for but the we're people. not going to go to them primarily we're going to go to the secret service and u.s marshals and they should collapse everything out yeah. there okay right. the only thing you'll have to go to the secretary of state and uh to the attorney general's office is to purge your public bankrupt records off yeah. the books okay right. Right. give them notification and then they have to restore all the rights that they're depriving of you and they have to give you your green status also in the form of being placed upon the green sheet, given a green identification card, and also a green passport. Okay? Yep. Hang on just a second. Yeah. Ready? Yep. Okay, you guys go ahead and talk for a while. I'll be right back. Okay, thank you. Well, this clears up a lot of things for me. I just had a few questions on where you go crank out the rest of the documents. So we just have one now. There's, there isn't anything other than the sheriff document, and then I think there was a Marshall one too. Uh, no, the Marshall, Marshall one was in there previously, but we need to adapt it for the Secret Service. Right. Oh, that was the earlier one this month. Right. Rem- like remember, the Marshals are there to seize things. The Secret Service is there to do forensic audits.
I tried to talk on freeconferencing uh, dot com through that flash phone thing, and it didn't work, so I called in. Yeah, someone else, uh, Yashron, was trying to do it, and I suggested he call free conferencing support any time during the day and have them help him connect to the room, even though there's nobody in the room. And uh, if, if there's a problem, there may be some kind of browser problem in his browser, or just, it, it may be something in the way his computer is set up, and, and you too. I just unmuted my mic. Is there? Do you see anything going on if I talk? Oh, well, I see you talking, yeah. On the phone it does, but nothing on the computer. Well, I, on my on my uh, dashboard that I have here, I can see when people talk, the little yeah. volume bars goes back and forth. Right. But I, I tried talking a couple times on that little, it's called... Um, Flash phone. Yeah. It says powered by Zingawa, Zingawa or something. Well, if there's something wrong with it, the free conferencing needs to know. It, it could yeah. be that you have a your setup is slightly different, but still valid, and uh, let them know so they can get the bugs out of the system. Yeah. There's nothing I can do with it at this end. The only other choice is to go back to the Skype call, but we know how what a problem that was. I have a question. How many of you have moved forward on putting your documents together? I've got it all together. I will have to do a separate uh, writ of execution for the Secret Service. Right. But these, these questions tonight allows, allows me to wrap it up. Uh, for me... I, I have three stages because I'm in my birth state right now. And then I, the properties that I have the problem are in Nebraska. Oh, so yeah. there's no way I'm going to walk them into the Nebraska court. But yeah. I, I, I never had any problem when I was there. I was in bankruptcy court, uh, and I never had any problem with the clerk there. And they always, when they got something by mail, it got right in. Well, mm-hmm. that is a good question. Should, should we do on the outside of this private and confidential? Or that get a model type? Pardon? I would say it wouldn't hurt, and I would also put time sensitive. And uh, I think Patrick before recommended saying rid of executions, rips of execution. Are you putting amount of judgment? Is that like, is that, what are you guys doing there? Not applicable. And and, and, and a couple of templates, he says full value, and I added full value to be be determined by forensic audit. Right. Okay. Because once they go in auditing this stuff, we don't know how they're going to have to adjust these. Yeah, Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if we get a chance to review the audit, or do we have to take their word for it? Well, and I guess that's a question we can ask on the <laughs> be phone. Be careful, Tom. <laughs> what? I said be careful. <laughs> Why? Yeah, well, you know, when you start at having doubts like that, you're going to get your clock cleaned. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> oh, we have to trust ourselves. Well, I think each clerk is going to react differently to this. But it's got to be worth a lot. Like even a CUSIP number on your phone is worth like $240 million. They, they, they've they got bonds on our phone accounts for like hundreds of millions. Wow. So, so it's got to be hundreds guns, of millions. Yeah, firing all our utility bills. With I looked at, somebody looked up a, a CUSIP number on a, on a small airplane I built, and they bonded it for like $18 million. No Where'd way. you go to find that QCIP number? Oh, it's somebody or else knew it. what it was. It was some Fidelity.com. Kind of, yeah, something there, like that. There's various tricks on entering the number. They don't like us doing that, so they make it different. You have to uh, put extra spaces in somewhere or dashes, and if you don't have it in there, then they don't give anything. Yeah. Wow. But, yeah, everything is bonded. There, There's like a whole secret economy that's, 
what do you want to call it? Like okay, so we we need to add, or something. Add our, all our utility account numbers into this too. Mm-hmm. Cable, internet provider, all of that. Well, I I think that's what maybe Patrick might be addressing in his documents that he puts up tomorrow. Okay. Well, it's also it's also included in the, the general statement with the social security number and all attached contracts. Right. Right. But if we bring it out in the open, they can't say, "Oh, I did. We didn't notice that attached contract." Right. By, men- by mentioning it. But I think every clerk is going to react differently to this. Some will be cooperative. Well, perhaps we will wake up the country a little bit more with these clerks, then, huh? Yeah. Well, I I had a brief conversation with someone who said he was clerk of court for for se- several decades. And, uh, well, it can't be too many decades, but that's okay. Uh, and he, he said the clerks are very aware of the system. Oh, really? And, and, he, and he, I asked him, is it possible that, that some of them really aren't aware of it, even though you think they are? And he says, no. Everyone is aware. Judges are totally aware. The clerks are totally aware of what's going on. Wow. Well, that is good to know. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is if they're totally aware of it, how come they haven't accessed it? If maybe they did, we don't know, right? Well, yeah. In fact, I, in, when I was having a problem with the property, and I'll, I'm going to be able to get it back because I have all, all kinds of letters that I wrote to the clerk about this that I can just get enforced. The clerk insisted that they don't access the account at all. They don't know anything about it. Liar, uh-huh. liar. Oh, gosh. I mean, I, I had her tell me that on three separate occasions. Well, they can't tell the public those things, uh, Thomas. This is Sylvia. Hi, people. Yeah, of course, Sylvia. Yeah, they 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 can't talk this with the public. Well, I I, I included the fact that they were accessing my account in in the uh, uh, in my replies to, as as part of what I was doing. I was using somebody else's money order. Yeah, I think they have an out. Have an oath not to talk. Exactly. It, it, you know, there is a public part and there is a private part. Well, and really what we are doing is like um, acting from the public for the private, right? Okay. From the private right. side of our our being, our person. So uh, we cannot expect them to be uh, disclosing certain information that, you know, we well, have to I, I, I would, I would expect them if they don't want to talk about it to play dumb, not flat out yeah. totally deny. It's not play dumb. It's is it the duty of their office. Yeah. Yeah. But they and, they, they flat out denied it. And I, I you know, I, so I much, you are, are are you a little bit too close to the mic or something? I'm having trouble understanding some of the words you are saying. Is that anybody else having trouble with it? No, mm-hmm. no. You're okay. a little, you're a little bit raspy, like you're too close for me, also. Yeah, no, some no. words are, are, I cannot make up. Is uh, that better? You too, you too, Sylvia. I am. Okay, is this okay. better? Is it is better this? now? It still has a reverberation on it. Maybe it's a little. Is it too loud? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's too loud. Yeah. Is this better now? I lowered it. it. Is it does it sound better now? A little bit better, yeah. Okay. I don't have the best uh, headphones. How, how's that? How's that? Any better? It seems yes, to be um, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, it should be better, Thomas. I I cranked down the uh, volume control on my microphone on Skype. Everything has a separate control. Can I ask a question, Thomas? Sure. Yeah. Um, when um, 
when we do this, do we have we we should all we, we're supposed to do like what he said before, like write the Secretary of the Treasury and the Postmaster General along with the Secretary of the State and the Attorney Generals of our state and our nation. It, they, everybody gets notified, like like that other paperwork. The uh, uh, well, what he what he just said is that these people at the end get notified, so that when we get our assets back. They get notified to remove the public records of, of this. Right, that's when you execute the little straw man guy. Right, right. Well, that, that's when okay. you remove the public uh, records with the permissions. This is Pat again. Okay. They are not going to recognize anything until it comes from the clerk of the court's office. Right. Okay. So we're not going to do those other risks and those other items that we were doing before. Okay, we have to process these through the clerk of the court's office as either a writ of execution for the U.S. Marshals and the Secret Service and then a writ of restitution to uh, the secret or to the secretary of state and the attorney generals. Okay, that's what it would be. The attorney generals are basically a trustee, an endearment trustee, an endearment trustee, okay? Right. They will take care of all the public records, basically with the Secretary of the Treasury and everything else and the IRS. Purging those all off the system. The Secretary of State, they will also be involved in purging the records but they have to receive a writ of restoration from the clerk to the court's office. And since all our bailments are in that clerk of the court, that bankruptcy and everything out here is in bankruptcy, they're only going to listen to the bankruptcy clerk of the court. They're not going to listen to us. Okay? Mm-hmm. I was now, reading you know, earlier in Tennessee, and they are very open talking about the clerk and master. It's like a dual uh, duty that the clerk has. And a few weeks ago, I called the district court and uh, for something else, and then I asked about the Chancery Court, and they told me that uh, the offices had merged, and in some states you find because this clerk and master, I'm, I'm having here. You're, you're digressing. You're digressing into something that you don't need to do. Okay. Well, well, no. no listen, listen. Would you listen? Okay. Sure. You I was stay away from all that other garbage. It's all in bankruptcy. Yeah. Okay. When you, if you are a naturalized citizen, you still ended up going being registered through the bankruptcy court. Okay. That naturalization record now was recorded at the bankruptcy court. You basically paled your assets into the bankruptcy and created a fictional bankrupt bailee. Well okay? I'm a foreign so national. everything is in everything is in bankruptcy. Forget this court of chancery. Forget all this no, no, district. No, 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 but I was no. going to say something. The duty that they have is to acknowledge the executors and the states. No, we're not going to acknowledge no executor, no state, okay? We're acknowledging that this is a bailment. Okay, that's all it is. This executor and executrix and all that other garbage no, no, bullshit. No, 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 no. I'm just reading. I, wa- I wanted to finish reading the page that I have in front of me, but it's not necessary. Go ahead. I don't want to hear it, okay? 
I've been down all that stuff. I've got the chancery uh, document out of Tennessee, okay? It's not what you think. I was just going to point... No, it's not what you think, okay? That's the problem. You're thinking thinking that you know something that you don't know anything about. Oh, you are mistaken. I don't just fucking piss me off. Okay? I I don't want I'm to giving you, I'm giving the instructions here. Okay? You wanna do your thing, then go sit off in the in the dust world <laughs> and do your thing. Okay? You're assuming wrongly. You're assuming wrongly. I was just reading the power of the office of the clerk. That's hey, it. No. No. That's, no. You do not read anything on here that might confuse anybody else, okay? It is beautiful. They have to They have to serve the people. It is all good. I'm not trying no, to... No, it isn't. No, it isn't, okay? Until you understand what the fuck I just put up there or had Tom put up there, you don't know shit, Okay? You've done this before on call. You've done this before on call. You've done this before on calls. And, Becky, you get in there and you think you know a lot of stuff and you don't. You need to keep your mouth shut and listen to somebody for a damn change instead of running off the mouth. Okay? Okay, any other questions? Comments? I mean, good comments. Green comments. I I can't think of anything, Patrick. You've answered all the questions I had. Hello, this is Kevin. Uh, uh, I had a comment, but I'm kind of shooken up. I'm scared to make a comment, Patrick. You might chew me up and spit me out. <laughs> no, I won't. If you make a valid comment, okay, but to try and come in and try and put misleading information onto the site. So basically think about what you're going to say, and basically if it has substance to substantiate what we're trying to do here, because, see, nobody understood that this was all in bankruptcy. We knew it that everything was operating in bankruptcy, but we didn't know how it got there. Yeah, I know, because we, we tried, yeah, I know, because we tried to go to the bankruptcy court before, uh, a few months back, and but we didn't have the right formula when we went in there. Yeah, now we that we have the right formula, now we have the right formula, we can go in. So, I, uh, so I'm basically just going to look at the documents I'm going to study, and so I'm not really going to have too many questions until, until maybe tomorrow, because I'm going to look at the documents tonight, however. But uh, like I said, we went in the bankruptcy court before, so about three or four months ago, Patrick, we did. You, told, you know, we went in it, but we didn't have the right formula. Now we yeah, got the right We're not going yourself. into court. We're not going into court. We're going uh-huh. to where the court is at, but we're only okay. going to the clerk of the court. We're not getting past so we, the court. Going, so we go to another, we're going to the other entity. The clerk is the we're entity going, of itself. Yeah, we're going to the clerk, and then we're stopping right there. We're not going to no judge. Right, no the clerk is the entity was ever involved in this process. Right, that's what I'm saying. The clerk is another entity, and we're going to that particular entity, the clerk. Well, yeah, right. we've been going to the clerks to get to the court, okay? But we're going to go to the clerk, and we're going to stop right there. We ain't going any further. Because if we go any further, then we're we're really messed up. Okay. Yeah, we're, I understand, the judge. Yeah. we're the judge. And that, yeah, that we already got our ruling. We are the we are the original yeah, we are the original bailer. Yes, I understand that. Well we're not the bankrupt. No, I said the bailer. Yeah, we're the we're the true yeah. bailer That's in right. the whole damn right. process and we bailed out the country and the state bankrupts. That's right, we did. Yeah, we are uh, uh, full faith and credit. Okay, and deception, they tried to claim that we were a bankrupt in the process, and that's why all these 
quasi laws, codes of laws and everything that they've written out there was another means for them to try and gain access to our bailments. Yeah, it's all done on a reverse monitoring system. Do we have to? Well, not the dumb question. I'll keep it. No. Do we what? Well, you said we have to give it to the clerk of the court, right? Yes. And they're they're gonna they're gonna wipe their butts with it, or they're gonna file it. You take it in there, and if you can, take it in there, and basically you take a fourth copy in with you, and you have that time stamped, okay? Right, yeah. Now, they may end up turning and handing after they sign them and everything, and they have to sign these, okay? You give them. Basically, that is right on the thing, that basically they are to issue these writs, okay? You're the judge, Okay? You're the bailor. Okay? That is the chief bailor. You're the chief judge in this process. They now work for you. Okay? Because you're the real the real deal. Okay? Not the quasi judges that are sitting in the back room in some damn stinking quasi courtroom. Operating under quasi laws. So we go in there and they will sign them. Now they may hand them right back to you. Okay? That's what line number five or line number four on that sheriff's document said that they will hand them back to you. Then you would have to turn around and pay them to the U.S. Marshal or to the sheriff or to the Secret Service. And then when you take them there, okay, you would get the two copies back. You would take them there, and you want to get a receipt that they received those. If the clerk of the court doesn't process them. Now, on the cover letter that I put, that basically if the local U.S. Marshals and the Secret Service do not have jurisdiction to do what we want them to do, but they should have the capability to do it, okay? Then they are to issue that out to the clerk of the court in D.C. And they have the original so they can do a certified copy of the original to the clerk of the court out in D.C., we know that they have that capability. We've been to those courts before. We've talked to the clerks of court. And they've told us things like that. But That's don't okay. be surprised if they hand you the two copies back and you have to make the delivery. Either they send them back to us by mail or uh, whatever, and we have to turn around and then send them certified mail under the green, because we're coming in in the green, not in the red, into the process. Okay, any other questions along that lines? These are not that hard, really, okay? Takes you a little time to sit down and get your mind wrapped around it, but you need to do that, okay? 
it's going to be a little confusing because we've all been misled by a bunch of these other uh, items out here. And, yes, I've done numerous court documents. So, basically, it took me a little while to try and re-educate myself into these damn court scenarios of going about it this way. As if we're not going to a judge. We're just going to the clerk of the court, and we're just going in to pick up our bailment. That might be all we need to do is just go to the clerk of the court and say, hey, we want our bailment back. You take out that master bailment, and basically all subsequent items have to collapse too. Yeah, we may not even need the writs of execution. That's possible. But we won't know until we try it. Because you're never going to get ahead until you try. You sit on the fence and you're going to still be sitting there when a fence falls down underneath you. Well, I'm stuck on a fog wire fence, so I have to get out of it. Yes. You have to cut yourself free. And basically, this isn't that hard, okay, when you see what's really going on. And you start understanding. Listen to the audio from last Sunday. Listen to the audio Friday night. And listen to this one again. Until you fully understand them. Read the documents. Read the words. I will. Tom's posted a lot of other words up there that I've talked about over the last couple weeks. Yes, he gave us a big list of words of... uh about three weeks ago, and I, I took them all out of Anderson's and posted them. Yeah. I, I posted the whole thing. Uh, it actually ends up about being about 70 pages because I didn't join the lines together. I left left the lines just the way that they are in Anderson with all the footnotes. Yeah. But you got to realize that those are law dictionaries, and basically... One of the best things to do is try and get an Oxford Universal Dictionary. Go and check out the Salvation Army, the Goodwill Store, in their book section, and see if somebody in there might have turned in an old dictionary. You get a civilian standpoint of some of these words. Also, now you can do a comparison between the difference in the understandings that in some cases they've been hidden from being utilized in the law side of the item, but the meaning is still there. Like the word green. It's about one whole column in the Oxford Universal Dictionary. And that's basically where it says that it's the living, not the dead. You can't rely upon just one source, okay? And I am not just one source. I'm a multi-source person. Because I've been to all these other sources. Now, a lot of these other gurus are just a one source item. And they're operating with the wrong source of their system of understanding, which is the codes of law, which is for the bankrupt, for the debtor system. They're still in hell. 
they're still in bail. And they will continue to be there until they turn the light on. And I don't know how many of them are ever going to turn the light on. Okay. Questions? Rebuttals. Hmm. Bitches. None of the rebuttals right now. So okay. You, you made I'll a go break. ahead and terminate your call then, Tom. I you, guess everybody's yeah, you, happy as a lark. Well, you made it very clear, and I think we all know the work we have to do. Uh, I, I was almost ready to go out, and you cleared up, cleared up the problems uh, I've had. So I uh, thank you for that. Okay. Okay. Uh, I apologize for Thursday or, to Thursday or Friday night. What the hell night was that? That's okay, Patrick. You do so damn much work for us that, uh, you know, you get uptight. That's uh, us, us handling that is a very small price for us to pay for all the work you do for us. Well, I just don't want you to spend too much time on worrying about trivial stuff, Tom, because you haven't got that much time left. You need to get your bailment off the table and then go live the rest of your life in a little enjoyment, okay? Forget oh. about all the other garbage, okay? Throw it aside. That's what is called out in the Bible. You need to cast the thing off. True, true, true. And see, that's what most people out here, you need to just let sleeping dogs lie and get on. All right, Tom, I'll meet you in Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that's a bad place. That's where my brother died. All right, how about Cancun? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Well, you can go out and meet Jeff out around Devil's Canyon or Devil's Springs or whatever that is out in Idaho. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Okay. Good night. Okay. Good night. Okay, bye. bye. 